I was driving home from a church service early this Monday morning. We Roman Catholics, Papists, as some of you may call us, we honor the Blessed Mother and the Immaculate Conception. We did that today, December 8th, a Monday. And I was driving through some snow showers, actually, as I was heading to the church. Most of those had cleared. And driving back with the, uh, the clearer skies, I was able to take a look at the gas prices alongside the highway. And I noted that in some areas, the gasoline price is already dropping down to about $2.70 a gallon. That's here in the middle Atlantic. I'm told that there are actually some places in the country where the prices actually happen to be cheaper. Just yesterday, I was reading in the Washington Post business section a column by a guest editorialist who was saying that oh, a dozen years ago to 15 years ago, people were saying oil would never again get above $20 a barrel. And unfortunately, that prediction was way, way off, as most of us know, who've had to do a lot of driving and spent a lot of money to do all of that driving. In the meantime, the same writer says, no one foresaw the recent collapse of oil prices. And that's because a lot of folks out there thought that OPEC was a monolith that would never, ever make any changes to its policies. But a great many members of the OPEC, that is the oil petroleum or exporting countries or whatever they call themselves, they're not really a monolith. They are actually a group of rivals. In some cases, the Saudis don't want anything to do with the Iranians and vice versa. Meanwhile, the United States is pumping oil at record levels. However, we are also told that because the price now is so low for oil around the world, that pumping the oil out of the ground in the Bakken Shell and the, the Dakotas, as well as what we have in the tar sands in Alberta, that's in Canada, for you public school attendees, we're told that may no longer be profitable. In fact, we may have already dropped below that particular ceiling as to where the people who are producing that oil could make a profit, which means we might see a leveling off of prices. Albeit, I would say, most people who are driving are likely happy with a cost below $3 a gallon. After a while, when you were paying $3 a gallon and you used to think that $2 a gallon was expensive, anything below 3 now seems like it's quite okay. It's amazing what you get comfortable with over a period of time. I was also thinking as I was driving home today about the condition of the roads where I happen to live. And these are in very, very rough shape in a lot of places. In fact, I do a lot of driving. Maybe not as much as someone who was out on a sales route all the time, but I do a lot of driving in the Middle Atlantic and Northeast regions. That is everywhere from uh, Virginia's eastern shore to Virginia's western shore, down into the Richmond area, up north to Washington, D.C., into the Baltimore, Maryland area, through Pennsylvania, New York State, and sometimes New England. And I'm here to tell you, there are a lot of serious issues with the roads. It's not just the fact that many of them are cratered. I hit a crater on a bridge that was crossing a gorge in Clark Summit, Pennsylvania, a few years ago. And even though my Jeep only had 39,000 miles, after I went through that great big moon-sized crater, I had to go to the, uh, to the uh, dealership and have something called a ball joint replaced. Most of the time, those won't go bad until about 150,000 miles, but that jarring rocking of that vehicle that particular day as I was driving down that highway, that had a lot to do with that. So I'm going to tell you right now that we are in a bit of a dilemma. We need better roads in order to further the economy in the United States. How do we get better roads? Well, there was a story last week in the Philadelphia newspaper that some Chinese investors are willing to actually do the road rehabilitation in the state of Pennsylvania, in particular along the Pennsylvania Turnpike, which just happens to be the road that ruined my ball joint a few years ago. The Chinese who would be doing this could actually earn citizenship. They could become U.S. citizens by forking over their own private money for the road rehabilitation. Think about that for a moment. It's a way to pay your way into the United States. The merits of that, I guess, are still up in the air. The Chinese are going to be, perhaps, many of the wealthier ones, the people who bail out the United States, unless their own government decides to call our note at some point. Speaking of that note, and that's part of the problem that we're dealing with at the moment, and just let me readjust the computer here, the computer screen, for a second. Speaking of that note, this government in the United States spends twice what it collects. Oh, it may vary by a few pennies from year to year on the dollar, but it's essentially been twice what it collects, and it's been doing this for many, many years. 
when we hear people say we need to maintain a strong military, well, okay, and then what are we going to cut? Or we hear people who say, well, we have to make sure that we take care of all of those people out there who need to eat, who need basic medical services, and who are retired and in need as well. We are suddenly in a quandary. It becomes, well, who, who do you want to cut? Where else are we going to cut? Now what we're hearing with gasoline prices dropping to these levels, unheard of in recent years, we are hearing some voices coming out of Washington saying it's time for a gasoline tax. Some people are proposing 15 cents a gallon. Others are proposing as much as 25 cents a gallon. You may even hear some people proposing 50 cents a gallon. And what they're telling us is this will help replenish a transportation fund that will allow for road repairs in this country which is a critical need that we, we have. I don't think anyone out there who does any driving is going to be doubting that. However, if you're going to be collecting this money, and you have to make some choices, let's be honest about it. I hear people who are conservatives out there all the time, and they're my fellow travelers, if you will, on the right. They don't like paying extra taxes. And even liberals who say that they would pay extra taxes if they could have better roads, they want that money then actually dedicated to paying for better roads, and they don't want that money hijacked for other purposes. Here's a thought on all of this. If you're going to go ahead with this, you have to ensure, you have to pressure members of the House and Senate that that money indeed, unlike, say, Social Security, which just gets dumped into the general fund and is going to be in some serious, serious trouble itself in a few years, you have to press those people in charge to ensure that that money will go exclusively and for nothing else but road repairs. If that doesn't happen, well, we're just looking at printing more money and borrowing more money from, from China in order to, uh, uh, well, essentially build new roads, put that on the credit card, in order that we might get a few votes from some local folks for the projects that we've done and some of those people who are out there earning prevailing wage while they're actually resurfacing all of these new roads. Just some food for thought today, but I do want to point out and stress this one more time, if I could. You are going to have to make choices in the future. You cannot have the world's greatest military and provide the butter that the American people need, or you cannot go fix America's roads and you cannot then turn around and say we're going to take care of the poor and make sure that we feed them, that we clothe them, that we give them good medical care, and that we ensure grandma and grandpa aren't going to die living out of the woods because they have no other place to stay. We are going to have to make some difficult choices. And I think it's high time people started thinking about all of that. Maybe this Christmas season is a good time to start. Speaking of Christmas, I vowed to come out from behind the camera or from out of the shadows by Christmas. In the meantime... I'm always looking for something in the background, and today my computer, my handy-dandy computer, managed to do that nicely for me. But if you have a, a nice background that I might use, please feel free to send that to me. Uh, I might even mention your name during one of my brief chats. Hope you have a great weekend ahead, and uh, at least a full week before you get there.